that is um, the derivative in graphing an application okay so by uh, by knowing the derivative of a function we can actually predict uh, on how the graph um, the graph of the function f uh, will look like okay uh, so let's uh, look at uh, this example here so the increasing and decreasing function so this uh, graph here is increasing from uh, this part up to zero okay and it will it, it, it is uh, somehow reach a peak uh, at x equal to zero and then it decrease up to two and it reach uh, a minimum call a minimum uh, at x equal to 2 and then it increase again up to 4 and then from 4 uh, up to infinity it is a constant function okay so um, if we look here if f is increasing okay uh, f is increasing on the interval if f of x1 is less than f of x2 where our x1 is less than x2 okay so that is how um, we, we define an increasing function okay um For decreasing, f of x1 is uh, is greater than f of x2, and here x1 is less than x2 because x2 is located to the right of x1. Okay. And then if it is a constant function, then we will have f of x1 is equal to f of x2. And uh, it doesn't matter if x1 is less than x2 or if x2 is less than x1. Okay. Um, and then uh, for the increasing function, we note that all the tangent line, each of the tangent line here, any uh, points on the interval will have a positive slope. And for the decreasing, for the decreasing uh, function, we have each tangent line at any of uh, a point between the interval will have a negative slope. Okay, we will have negative slope, and this one has a positive slope. Uh, and for this. Uh, the tangent line will have a zero slope, okay? In other words, uh, for a constant function, the f prime will be, uh, will be zero, okay? For this constant function, um, constant function f, f prime of x will be zero, and this one, f prime of x will be less than zero and this one f prime of x will be greater than zero for any point x okay 
and then we, uh, we can uh, summarize it into these terms here. Okay. Okay, let's look at example one. Um, Find the interval on which fx equal to x squared minus 4x plus 3 is increasing and the interval on which it is decreasing. So we can decide the increasing and decreasing uh, interval by investigating the value of f prime. Okay, so f prime here, f prime of x is equal to 2x minus 4. Okay, you differentiate this function, you get 2x minus 4. So when x is, um, when x is what? When x is, uh, if you want to find the interval, you have to let f prime of x is equal to 0 first. So let it equal to 0 and find the points where f prime is, equal to zero so that is when the function f reach its minimums or maximum okay so f prime of x is equal to zero is when 2x is equal to 4 or x is equal to 2 so this is the point when the function either reach a maximum or a minimum we don't know yet but we know this uh, function uh, sorry, this uh, point here is either minimum or maximum, okay? If it is a uh, minimum, then uh, the, uh, the left-hand side, okay, so we have x, sorry, we have x equal to 2, okay? Uh, x equal to 2, to the left of x equal to 2 must be negative. And to the right of uh, left, to the right of x equal to 2 must be positive. So this is when x is a minimum function. Okay. But if I have, um, let's say, uh, for x equal to 2 here, I think I. Uh, <coughs> Okay, so if uh, you have x equal to two, and the left and the the left hand side of x equal to two is positive, and the uh, the right hand side of x equal to two is negative, then x equal to two is the maximum point of the function. Okay, so um, based on these uh, properties, you can check whether it is a minimum or maximum, okay? So, uh, wait. Okay, so you have uh, x squared minus 4 plus 3. x minus 4 plus 3. So f of x is equal to x squared minus 4 minus 3. Okay, first uh, you check the f prime 
a prime of x is equal to 2x. And I think this is uh, 4x. Minus 4x. Minus 4, okay, and then after that, uh, you let f prime of x is equal to 0. Uh, so it means that your 2x minus 4 is equal to 0. It gives you 2x equal to 4 or x is equal to 2. So these uh, points is either minimum or maximum. You have to check if uh, it is a uh, maximum. If it is maximum, so x equal to 2 here. Uh, this one must be positive and this is a uh, negative for the values of f prime. And of course, for x equal to 2, it is uh, f prime of x is equal to 0. So f prime of x is positive uh, to the left of x equal to 2, and f prime of x is negative to the right of x equal to 2, then the function f uh, has a maximum at x equal to 2, okay? If you have uh, x uh, equal to 2, and for the left of x equal to 2, you have f prime of x is equal to negative, and for the right, for the right hand side, f prime of x is positive, f prime of x is, is 0 at x equal to 2, okay, for this condition here, f has a minimum at x equal to 2, okay. So let's check uh, with our function. So f prime is equal to 2x minus 4. f prime of x is equal to 2x minus Okay, so for this, uh, if you choose x equal to 1, what will be the value of f prime? Okay, so f prime will be equal to 2 minus 4, which gives you negative 2. And then if x is uh, equal to 3, which is to the right of x equal to 2, so f prime will be 6 minus 2, which is positive. So it is minus, it's minus and plus. So it means that the f has a minimum. So it means that f has a minimum at x equal to, so, so this is your conclusions. Okay. And then what will be the coordinates of x equal to 2? Okay. So this is the function x squared minus x minus two. Okay. So f x is equal to x squared minus four x uh, minus three. Okay. This is the function. Um. So what is f of two? Okay. If you substitute f of two, you will have four minus um, this is 8 minus 3, okay? Minus 4 minus 7. So the coordinate, the coordinate of the minimum values is 2, negative 7, okay? So you can predict that uh, the graph of F, it looks like this, okay? We look something like, uh, at x equal to 2, which is somewhere here, and y is equal to negative 7, okay, so it will be something like this. Okay. It will be something like this. It is quadratic. It even looks like, like a smiley shape. So this is the graph. If you want to find uh, the coordinate of these two points, you can uh, find it by letting y is equal to 0. What will be the values for x when y is equal to 0? So 
f x is x squared minus 4x minus 3. Okay. So f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 3. Okay. You let uh, the function equal to 0. You get what? So how do you simplify this? Um, so x... Three one. Is it okay? Something like this. If cannot, then you use quadratic formula. Why is quadratic formula? Okay. Why is quadratic formula? So x is equal to um, negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus four ac divided by. Uh, Divide by 2a. Is it 2a? I cannot remember. But you can check with the calculator. Okay? You can check with the calculator. Um, so, Dr. One of the value of x would be 3 and another one would be 1. x is equal to 3. And x is equal to 1 x equal to 3 and x is equal to 1. By using quadratic, you can check with the calculator. I don't have the calculator. But you can easily find the root for this function. Either you factorize. I'm not sure. I, I, I've never done it uh, like for years. So you better check it by using your tools. Okay. Um, so x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 1. So it means that our our graph here is not is not um, correct uh, because here somehow it reached the negative uh, values. Okay, so the graph should be okay. Uh, whatever it is, we still have to find the the y intercept. So what will be the values when x is equal to zero? Okay. So when x is equal to 0, the y will be negative 3. So y is equal to negative 3. Okay, so we can draw the graph. Okay, so firstly, uh, you have uh, the coordinates uh, negative 2, uh, 7. Sorry, I think positive 2, seven, negative 7, okay. And then you have a three and one, okay? Must be somewhere here. And then uh, you also have y equal to negative three when x is equal to zero. Are you sure? I, I think you have to check this. I'm, I don't think this is correct because somehow it intersect this point, zero, negative three. It intersect zero negative three. So it cannot intersect uh, one zero and three zero. Okay, I think this is not correct. So please check by using your calculator. This is not correct. Can you check it for me? Squared minus for x plus three, not minus three. Wait, huh? so this is plus. This is plus. So this is um, not correct as well. The question is minus 4x plus 3. So let's correct this. x squared minus 4x plus 3. Okay, so from here, f1 is 2x plus, oh, sorry, minus 4. This is correct. Okay, this is correct as well. 
Okay, this one is okay. Okay, F prime, okay, this is correct. Okay, start from here. You have a minus 4x plus 3. And then this one, F of 2 will be what? 4 minus 8, okay, plus 3. So what will be the, the values? 4 minus 8 is minus, minus 1, is it? So this one should be minus, minus 1, okay? So the coordinates will be minus 1, okay? So this is the coordinate. So it should be negative one here, and this is two. But this is not correct. And then what? Um, when x is equal to zero, the y will be plus three. Okay. So, The y should be plus 3. Plus three. And then you have uh, coordinate plus 1, negative 1 here. And this is uh, 1, 0. Okay, 1, 0 and zero so the graph will look something like this okay, okay so this is the graph and it reached eight minimums at x equal to two. And it is tally with uh, what we have observed from here. F prime, when x is equal to 1, f prime is equal to negative 2, when x is equal to 3, which is a point to the right of x equal to 2, f prime is equal to 2. So f has a minimum at x equal to 2. Okay? So that's why based on the graph, it will look something like this. Okay? So I hope it is clear. Any questions? Okay, is it okay? Can we continue? Okay, uh, let's go to the next uh, example, which is example two. Uh, find the interval on which fx equal to x cubed is increasing and the interval on which it is decreasing. Okay, so <clears throat> For this example 2, your fx is equal to x cubed. Okay. So firstly, you have to find f prime. f prime of x is equal to 3x squared. Okay. So for this uh, function f, f prime is always positive. If we look at uh, this function, it is 3x squared. For any values of x, even when x is negative, this function f prime will always positive or equal to zero. When x is equal to zero, then f prime will be zero. So this one is always greater than or equal to zero. Okay. So, uh, so that is our conclusion. So it means that our x equal to zero here, when f prime is equal to zero, okay, it is not a minimum or maximum values. Okay, it must be a reflections and inflection points only. Okay, so f prime is equal to zero. Okay, let f prime is equal to zero. So it means that your three x squared is equal to zero then x is equal to zero, okay? So this one, this function x here is an inflection point. Why? Because uh, when, uh, for the point x uh, less than zero, 
Efron is positive. Is positive. When for x greater than zero, Efron is also positive. Okay, so it is not a minimum as well as maximum. Okay, so this one it is an inflection point. Okay, now let's uh, draw the graph. Okay. You have x equal to zero, okay. So, firstly, you have to find the coordinate of x, of x equal to zero. F zero is equal to zero cube, which gives you zero. So, the coordinates will be zero, zero, okay. So the coordinate will be zero, zero. So, this, the graph should look like this. So it is positive, okay, and then it is positive as well. It is always increasing. It is increasing um, for the interval before x equal to zero, and also it is um, increasing for the interval to the right of x equal to zero, okay? But then you don't know how the curve of uh, f looks like is it really looks like this okay can we say that it is actually looks like uh this one instead of this one okay how, how do you know that the function f will looks like this instead of this one this one is also increasing for the first interval and then it is also increasing for the second interval okay but uh, in order to prove that the function r is actually uh, the first uh, graph here is by using the second derivative test okay so we differentiate uh, f run twice so first derivative is uh, so we have fx equal to x squared. So f prime of x is equal to 3x, sorry, x cubed. f prime is 3x squared, okay? f double prime of x is equal to uh, 6x, okay? Okay. So for x less than 0, okay, for x less than 0, uh, so let's uh, choose x equal to negative 1. What will be the value f prime, f double prime? So this is double uh, second derivative test. This is called a second uh, derivative test. Before is first derivative test. Okay, so f double prime is equal to negative negative six okay which is negative which is less than zero okay and then for x uh, greater than uh, zero so, so let's choose x equal to one f double prime is equal to is equal to one is equal to six which is positive it is positive okay so it means that uh, for x, sorry, for x, uh, for the first interval, okay, since it is negative, this, uh, the graph will be, will be concave downward, okay, will be uh, concave downward. And for x, uh, for x positive, it is greater than zero, it is positive. So this one will concave upward. In other words, this one uh, will have smiley shape. Okay. So that's why you have concave downward first for the first interval, and then it concave upward for the second interval. So it uh, tally with the first graph. And for the second graph here, it concave upward first, and then it concave downwards. So this one is not correct. By using 
a second derivative test. Okay? By using second derivative, sorry, a second derivative test, we can confirm that the graph is like this. Okay? So, any questions? Anyone? Anyone still not clear? Okay, can we continue? Maybe had infinite limits. What do you mean? Intercept x still not true. What is this? Mohamed Sofi, can you say something? I cannot understand this. So if, sorry, so Muhammad Saif so has me. Muhammad Saif, so why is Muhammad Saif? So Can you say something? Intercept X still true. Maybe had, sorry, I don't understand. Eh? Um, it's okay then. Uh, so um, that is how you decide the shape of the graph for the function f, okay? So it is increasing from negative infinity up to zero and, and then it's also increasing uh, from zero up to infinity. So this one, x equal to zero is called inflection inflection point okay it is not a minimum and it is not a maximum point and uh, for the example three if you look at the graph you have uh, a minimum point here a maximum point here and here you have a minimum point at all these points the function the derivative of the function f prime they are all equal to zero f prime is equal to zero over here over these three points at these three points okay example three use the graph about the interval okay three x to the power of four plus four x x four four x two plus x squared plus two. Okay. Okay. So you have f x equal to three x to the power of four plus four x two minus twelve x squared plus uh, two. Okay. So first one. Uh, first thing that you have to do is you differentiate. So f prime is equal to 12 x cubed plus 12 x squared minus 24 x. Okay. And then after that, you let f prime is equal to zero. So you let this equal to zero. And then you find the values for x. Can you please check it for me? What will be the value? of x when f prime is equal to zero. Can you please check? Okay, I don't have a calculator with me. And then I'm sure your calculator can do it for, for a polynomial function up to third order. One zero negative two. Okay. So x is equal to one zero and negative. One zero negative two. Okay, uh, so we have three points here. Okay, so that is the reason why you have three maximum and minimum if you look at uh, the graph you have one two three 
you have either maximum or minimum three times. Okay. Uh, three points. Okay, and then uh, and then you decide. You use, you use a first derivative test. For the first derivative test, uh, firstly, you have to decide the interval. So you decide the interval for x less than, so the, uh, the minimum points from the tree will be negative 2, and then after that, 0 and 1, OK? So that is how you, you write the sequence of the point. So it means that the first interval will be from negative infinity up to negative 2. And then uh, from uh, negative 2 up to 0. Okay. So these are the interval that you are interested with. Okay. After that, 0 up to 1. Okay. And after 1, it is... 1 up to infinity, okay? So, after you decide the interval, okay, so this is uh, the intervals, you write down you calculate the value for f prime, okay? So, f prime for any of the point in this interval, okay? What will be the values? What will be the values if you if you let x equal to negative three? Negative three lies between negative infinity up to negative two, okay? So what will be f prime? Your f prime is equal to this. Can you please calculate for me what? is the value of f prime when x is equal to negative 3. Okay? F, f prime negative 3. Can someone calculate for me f prime when x is equal to negative 3? Negative one four four. Okay, so this one is negative. It means that it is negative. The sign of f prime. So th this is the sign. Okay, sign. Sign of f prime. So it is negative. Okay. What well, about this interval? You choose. Let's say x equal to negative one because negative one is in between this interval. What is the sign of f prime? This one as well. Uh, x from 0 up to 1. You can choose x equal to 0 0.5 here. What will be the value of f prime? What is the value for the second second interval here? Is it negative or positive? This one. Anyone? Twenty-four. Positive. This is positive. So this one is positive. What about this one? Let's say you took x equal to zero point five. Negative, okay? It's negative. This one is negative. And then from 1 up to infinity, you can 
you choose any points here, let's like say you choose x equal to 100, what will be the, the values? Is it positive or negative? Positive, okay. So this is positive, okay. So the behavior, okay, the next, uh, the next one will be the behavior of F, okay. So the so this is the sign of F prime. The sign of F prime correspond with the behavior of F. So this is uh, decreasing. Okay, because it is negative, and uh, for the positive, it is uh, increasing. Okay, this is decreasing, and this one is increasing. Okay, so this is our first thing. Okay, so this is first. Hello.
Dapat di sana. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm somehow uh, disconnected from the internet. Um. Okay, uh, let's continue. Okay, let's continue. Um, okay, I, I, I need to I, I need to know these uh, three values. F of negative two, f of zero, and f of one. Okay, so what are the values for these three points? F of negative two. What what is the values? And someone uh, help me with the calculator. I don't have calculator here. F of negative two. Negative thirty. Okay. 
negative 30. Okay, and then f of 0. f of 0 is 2. f of 0 is 2 and f of 1 is 1. f of 1, f of 1 or f of negative 1? Neg f of 1 is? f of 1, is it negative 1 or negative 3? I hope it is negative 3, yeah? Uh, okay, so negative 3. So we have these three values. Okay, now, what else uh, that we need? Uh, so you already have uh, the values for F. Okay, so let's plot. Okay, let's try to plot uh, the points. Okay. So you have F1, negative 3. Okay. 1, negative 3. 1, negative 3. Okay. And then what? Uh, Two, sorry, zero, two. Okay, zero and two. Okay, somewhere here. Then you have a uh, negative two, negative thirty. Negative two, okay, negative thirty. So let's say you have negative thirty somewhere here. Okay, so these are the points, okay. And then you also have, um, have what? Uh, wait, yeah. Mm. Okay, so, uh, so before that, we might want to check the behavior at infinity. Okay, so behavior, uh, behavior at infinity and negative infinity. So what will be uh, the limit of F when X is equal, is tends to negative infinity? So here, your F is... Uh, 3x to the power of 4 plus 4x to the power of 3. So if you substitute infinity in this um, in this uh, f, you will have you have you will have what? This will give you positive value. Okay. So the biggest order will give you a positive value. So so f will be positive. Okay. The so behavior when f for the limit of f, s, sorry, s x tends to positive first, okay? Positive values first, okay? So it will be positive infinity. What about when you have limit of f, s x tends to negative infinity? You can choose any values uh, such that x tends to negative infinity. You can, let's say, choose negative 1,000. Okay, to check with your calculator. Okay, but then uh, you can actually predict uh, from this uh, function here. What will be the values of f when we have a positive, sorry, a negatively large values for x? Okay, so this one will give you 
still a positive value because x to the power of 4 is always positive. Okay, so that's why for x uh, tends to negative infinity, it will still give you positive infinity. Okay, so it starts from the uh, from the from up because it is positive. It starts from up, it will goes down. Okay, goes down, and then it will reach. Uh, Wait, uh, what is this? Oh, so this is the point. Okay, so it start from up. And if we reach uh, this point here, okay, it is uh, decreasing. So if you look at the table, it is decreasing from negative infinity up to negative 2. So it is decreasing. It starts from up. From positive infinity, because we check the behavior, uh, and we know that it is plus infinity. So it starts from positive infinity, it goes down up to this point here, negative 2, 30, okay? And then it reaches its minimum here, and then it goes up. Okay, it goes up, starting from this, and it increases. And it will reach uh, this point here, okay? From negative 2 up to 0, from negative 2 up to 0, it is positive. It is increasing, okay? So from negative 2 up to 0, it is increasing. And then it decreases from 0 up to 1, okay? From 0 up to 1, it decreases. Okay, it is decreasing until it reaches this point and then it goes up again. It goes up and it steadily with the behavior at infinity when uh, we have the function x tends to positive infinity, the limit of f will tends to positive infinity. So that's why it goes up. It's from plus infinity from the start. Okay. So this is how the graph will look like. Even though we don't know and we, uh, we don't plot for, for every point of f, but then we can predict the shape of the function by using the derivative of f. Okay, so I hope it is clear. Uh, any questions that you want to ask? Any question? Anyone want to ask? Okay, no one? Okay, good. Uh, so that is how. Uh, concavity, uh, the next uh, chap topic is concavity. Concavity is actually our second, uh, second derivative test. I've mentioned that before. I've mentioned uh, that before. So this is second derivative test, second derivative test. Okay. Okay, so it, the theorem says, uh, for f double prime greater than zero, then f is concave up. If f double prime is less than zero, then f is concave down, okay? Okay, uh, let's look at example five and check it with the second derivative test. Uh, f is, f of x is x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1. So fx is equal to uh, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1, okay? 
Uh, so the questions ask us. To determine the interval for which F is increasing, decreasing, concave, oh, okay. Locate all inflection points, okay. Okay, good. Um, okay, so this is uh, the function. So first thing that you have to do is, of course, you differentiate, okay. F prime of X is equal to 3X squared minus 6X, okay. After you differentiate, you equate this equal to zero okay so find the values for x when f prime is equal to zero okay so three x uh you factorize x minus two is equal to zero x is equal to zero x is equal to two so you've got two points here okay so this these two points are either infection points either minimum points or maximum points. Okay, you have to decide. You, 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 you have to find it yourself. Okay, uh, so by using first derivative test, okay, first derivative test for, first derivative test, uh, we decide the interval. So the interval are decided based on these two points. So firstly, it is from negative infinity up to up to zero, okay? The smallest point is zero, so from negative infinity up to zero, okay? The second interval will be from zero up to two, okay? And the third one will be from two up to infinity. Okay, so we have three intervals. So this one, intervals, and then uh, we have what? We have the values for f prime is sine. Let's write this as sine of f prime. Sine of f prime. Okay. Okay. Can you please please check it for me? What are the value uh, the the sine of f prime here? Okay. And then uh, for the third one will be behavior behavior of f of function f this is sine of f prime so you can you can choose let's say x equal to negative one what will be f prime for x equal to negative one okay can you check on for me What is the value? Let's say you choose x equal to negative 1 here. What will be the sign of f prime? Is it positive or negative? Positive. Okay. It's positive. Okay. So this one is positive. What well, about the second one? Let's say you let's say you choose x equal to one. The sign of f prime is it positive or negative? Negative, and then the last one is positive. The second one is negative and this is uh, positive. So if the behavior, it is first increasing, and the second one is decreasing, and the third one is increasing. Okay. Okay, now let's draw. Let's plot. Okay. 
Before we plot, we have to find the values uh, for f, f of 2 and f of 0. What is f of 2? What is f of 0? So f of 0 and f of What is f of zero? The f is this one. x squared, sorry, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1. f of zero is 1, f of 2 is negative 3. 1, 2. And negative two. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's plot this. <clears throat> two negative three. Okay, so negative 3, one point, and 0, 1, 0, and 1, somewhere here. So this is 0, okay. Wait, uh, we should have... Uh, x equal to zero and x equal to wait. Eh? So, firstly, it is uh, increasing. Okay, behavior, behavior at infinity. Behavior at infinity. Either positive infinity or negative infinity. So, the limit of F. Okay, as x tends to negative infinity and the limit of f as x tends to positive infinity. So x tends to negative infinity. Okay, so it is uh, x to the power of 3. So the values will be negative. Negative will be dominant here. So the values will be negative infinity okay for x positive will be obviously positive infinity so we start from down we start from down negative infinity as x tends to negative infinity uh, the values of f will be negative infinity so it start from down here okay and then it goes up okay and then uh, it reach here Okay, this point here, and then it goes down, it goes down, and reach this point here. And once it reach this point, it will goes up. Okay. Uh, so how do I know this? Uh, it's because firstly, for this first in interval from negative infinity up to zero, it's stated here that it is increasing. Okay, from negative infinity up to zero, it is increasing. From 0 up to 2, it is decreasing. From 2 up to infinity, it is increasing again. So this is how the shape of the function f. Okay? And uh, at these uh, two points here, we have f prime is equal to 0. Okay? Um, but then, how do you know that the shape will look like this? Um, okay, can we say that the shape will look something like uh, something like 
let's say you have here zero one and here is two two negative three so this is zero one okay i don't uh if it looks something like this it concave upwards instead of downward and then it goes somehow uh, like like this one maybe and after that it goes like this well uh how do you know that the shape will concave downward from zero up to sorry from negative infinity up to zero here and then it's also concave downward from zero up to two okay and then sorry it concave downward up to this inflection point and it will concave upward from this point up to okay it won't be like this because we can check with the second derivative test okay so f double prime f double prime will be what is the f prime here so f prime is 3x squared minus 6x so f double prime will be 6x minus 6 okay so f a prime will be 6x minus 6. Okay. So we want to check for this interval. X from negative infinity up to 0. You can check with uh, F double prime for negative 1. Okay. You substitute it here, you will get uh, what? Negative negative 12 which is negative value it means that it concave concave downwards concave concave how 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 do you spell this concave So, uh, it concave downward for the first interval here so that's why it looks like this okay and then you can check for the second interval here so it's from negative uh, zero up to two i predict that the inflection point will be at x equal to one okay uh, so if you if you equate this equal to zero so f double prime equal to zero, it gives you 6x minus 6 equal to zero. So x will be x will be 1. So this is the inflection point. Okay. This is the inflection point. So it is in between 0 and 1. So it is uh, concave downward. For the first interval here from zero up to one okay down what you can check of course uh, you can check let's say with f double prime when x equal to 0 0.5 i'm sure it will be negative okay you can check and then if you have uh, f double prime for so x is equal to from zero point three from one up to two so you can check with 1.5 f double prime when x is equal to 1.5 will be concave upward so it means that it is positive okay if these are correct then obviously our graph is um is uh is fine it is correct this graph is uh, correct if you have this uh, negative and this one positive and then obviously uh, for f double prime uh, for the last interval here from two up to infinity so let's say you choose f double prime when x is equal to three it will be is it positive or negative this one is concave upwards 
I predict that it must be positive. Okay? It must be positive. If this graph is correct. Okay? So any questions? I hope it is clear. Anyone want to say something? Any question? No? Okay. So that is how you you draw the graph. Okay. And if you look at uh, this graph here, it looks uh, similar to our graph. Okay. We have done the first derivative test by using this table. And obviously, we, we can do the second derivative test as well. Okay. And we also find the infection point. Okay, next. Um, okay, uh, if, you look, if you look at here, uh, for the working given in the books, firstly, they find the infection points, and after that, they decide the intervals. So from here, uh, they choose the infection point and then they decide the interval. It means that from negative infinity up to one. So the infection point is one. Okay. So it divides uh, into two intervals. So another one will be one up to infinity. And then uh, the book, uh, these are the intervals. Uh, the book um, find the sign of f double prime, okay, for any values between these two, this uh, interval here, negative infinity up to one, okay, and, and then it's uh, negative, okay. So that's why for this uh, here, it can downward, and then uh, for x greater than 1, it concave upwards. Okay, so that is how uh, the book show you on how to get the second derivative test. Okay. I, I think this is uh, um, a proper way uh, to, to decide the uh, the second derivative sorry the the behavior the, to decide whether the function is concave downward or concave upward based on the second derivative uh, test okay we write it in terms of table form okay similar to the first derivative test okay okay next um Next is example six. Okay. So example six.
Sorry eh, sorry for the interruption. Okay. Um, okay. I think, uh, where are we? Okay, example six. Okay, example six, uh, F art is equal to X E to the power of negative X, okay? fx x e to the power of negative x okay okay uh, okay first thing uh like before you have to differentiate you have to differentiate uh this function here so we have to find f prime so what will be the F prime? So here you can apply product rules. Product rules, okay? So your X, your U will be X and your V will be E to the power of a negative X, okay? So u prime, sorry, f prime uh, will be u prime v plus v prime u. So u prime is 1, okay. Uh, v is equal to e to the power of negative x, okay, plus v prime. You differentiate v, you get negative e to the power of negative x, negative e to the power of negative x, okay, so u is x, okay, so this is your f prime, so the answer will be <coughs> e negative x minus e minus x e negative x, okay. Or it can also be written as e negative x multiply with 1 minus x. Okay? So this is your f prime. Okay, um, now you let f prime equal to uh, 0. Okay? So e negative e to the power of negative x is it possible to be zero? It is not possible. The only uh, values that can be zero is for is when x is equal to one. This is the only point when the function f prime can be zero. Why I said that? Uh, it, for this part here, it cannot be zero. Is because we know that um, the exponent function e x will be will look something like this. As x tends to negative infinity, it will be approaching zero, but it won't touch zero. So this is for e to the power of x. It's the same for e to the power of negative x. Okay, so this is the graph. So this is for e to the power of negative x. It will be approaching zero, but it will never touch zero. Okay, so for this part here, it won't be zero. It is not possible for e to the power of negative x to be zero. The only point that it can be zero is when x is equal to one. Okay. Okay, now, uh, you have uh, x equal to 0, and then you decide. You decide the interval. So, negative infinity up to 1, okay, and 1 up to infinity. So, these are the intervals, okay. Okay, and then you want to find the sign of f prime, okay, and... 
The next one will be the behavior. The behavior of F. Okay, can you please check it for me? Uh, when x, let's say x equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, it will be, it will be positive. I think this one will be positive. When x is equal to 2, it will be negative. Is this correct? Positive and negative. Okay. Is this correct? I think so. Okay. So for the behavior, this one is increasing. This is uh, decreasing. Okay. And then our next one, okay, uh, next one will be the second derivative test, okay? For the second derivative test, uh, we already got the first derivative, which is this one. Okay. F prime is equal to E one minus F. So f prime is equal to e to the power of negative x, 1 minus x. Okay, so let's choose u equal to e negative x and v as 1 minus x. Okay. So your f double prime uh, will be u prime v plus v prime u. So your u prime will be negative e to the power of negative x, v prime is equal to negative 1. Okay. And then uh, u prime here is negative, negative x. And then the v here is 1 minus x, okay, plus v prime, which is negative 1. The u is e negative x. Okay, uh, then uh, then you have uh, what? Uh, you simplify this, okay, simplifying this, you get, <clears throat> you get what? Uh, this is U in this is okay. So you get uh, negative e to the power of negative x, okay? And then here, 1 minus x, okay? And this one plus 1. Okay? So... The answer will be negative e um, multiply with 2 minus x. Okay, so you let this equal to 0, okay, like before, uh, this part here won't be 0. But this part here can be 0. So 2 is equal to x is the 
it could be an inflection point. Okay, so from this, you decide that uh, the interval is from negative infinity up to 2 and 2 up to infinity. Okay. So 2 here will be the inflection point. So if you look at carefully, if you look at carefully to the graph, it's concave upwards, or it concave downwards from negative infinity up to 2. And then from 2 up to infinity is somehow concave. So this is concave downwards. And then from 2 up to infinity, it concave upwards. So that is why x is equal to 2 is the inflection point. Okay? So... Okay. Uh, here, a uh, sign of f double prime, okay, which is, uh, I think you can check with your calculator, but somehow I know from the graph it is a uh, negative uh, for the first interval, and for the second interval it is uh, positive, okay. So, behavior of f which is concave uh, downwards okay and uh, for positive it is concave upwards okay we already know from the first uh, interval the first uh, derivative test and the second derivative test now we can plot, okay? We can plot. So for from the first derivative test, x is equal to 1. So what is f of 1? We want to know f of 1. What is f of 1? Yeah. Okay, can you please check f for me? f of 1. Correction x minus 2, x minus 2, x minus 2 e to the power of negative x. It's the same because here, um, here I have negative. If we have positive here, it will be x minus 2. It's the same. It's just the same. Uh, whatever it is, we'll still have x equal to 2 as the inflection point. Okay? Okay, what is f of 1? Zero point 
zero point three six meter. Zero point three six eight. Okay. Um, we may want to to check the behavior at infinity. Okay. So limit of f at x tends to negative infinity. Okay, yeah. Okay, uh Okay, we want to check the behavior. Okay, the behavior of f at infinity. Okay. okay. Uh, so f, our f is uh, e to the power of negative x. Sorry, our f is Our f is this one, x e to the power of negative x. Uh, 
power f is x e to the power of negative x. You can check uh, for the negatively large number. Okay, so let's uh, let's say you you choose um, x equal to one hundred. Okay, one thousand. Let's so let's say you choose x equal to one thousand. What happens to the value of f? Okay, one thousand. You multiply with uh, e to the power of negative one thousand. I I um, expect that. Uh, this part here will be almost zero, and this one will be 1,000. 1,000 multiplied with zero. I think it will be zero, okay? And then for this, sorry, x is to negative infinity. So this one will be negative, negative. So plus infinity, e to the power of plus infinity. So this one is... This part here, so this is uh, not correct. Okay, this part here will be, uh, will be infinity multiplied with infinity multiplied with infinity. Uh, but in in order to check for this one, I think you can just uh check for x tends to sorry x when you have x negatively large number, so let's say negative 1,000, what will be the values here? What will be the values here? Okay, can someone check for me? And then uh, for this part here, you can check when x equal to, let's say 1,000, what will be the values here? Is it tends to zero? Is it tends to negatively large number or is it tends to positively large number? Okay, what about the first one? Can someone do it for me? F is zero when X is negative infinity. So this one will be zero. What about this one? X positive. F will be zero as well. Both give you zero. This one gives you zero as well. So F of F of one is what? F of one is this one. Okay, now uh, let's plot the graph. Okay. As X stands, oh, sorry, uh, here you have F one equal to 0 0.68. Okay, one here. 0 0.368 okay. okay and then uh when x is equal this is not correct as x tends to positive infinity it is zero when x is for negative infinity, it is negative infinity. I think you better check. This one should be negative infinity instead of instead of zero. This one is negative infinity. From the graph, it shows that the values is negative infinity. You better check. What is the value of f when let's say you choose x equal to negative 1000? Can you please check again? For me, you've got math error. Math error means that it is negative. Okay? It will be negative. So this is, this one should be negative. Okay. Um, so, so 
it goes, it, it start from down, it start from down, okay, because uh, this is negative infinity, okay, start from down, and then it reach here, okay, it only has one maximum or minimum points, okay, and then you have uh, at x equal to 2 is the infection point, so this is concave down, but then from x equal to 2, it will concave up. And then it won't uh, reach x exists. Because as x tends to plus infinity, it will be 0. So it goes uh, towards 0, but it will never reach 0. So this is uh, the graph of uh, function f. Okay? If you look at the second derivative test, from zero, from negative infinity up to one, from for the second derivative test, from negative infinity up to two, it is concave downwards, and then from two up to infinity, it concave upwards. Okay, so downwards first, and then upwards. Okay, and then from the first derivative test. Negative infinity up to 1, it is increasing. 1 up to infinity, it is decreasing. Okay. Negative infinity up to 1, it is increasing. 1 up to infinity, it is decreasing. So this is the graph of the function. So this is the graph of the function. F should look like. Okay. So I hope. Uh, it is clear for you. Okay. Um, any any questions? Okay. I think uh, we better stop now. Uh, because uh, I noticed that the the students are are now only ninety with less than hundred. Okay. So we will start uh, next week. Uh, for the next example, okay? Thank you, Doctor. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor.